Welcome everyone to Count the Hegemony. My name is Aaron Taus. On June 3rd, Austria's Social Democratic Party, or SPÖ, will determine its new leader at a party congress. In a runoff election, Hans-Peter Toskozil, governor of the state of Burgenland, will face left-wing contender Andreas Pavla, who many observers compare with Jeremy Corbyn or Bernie Sanders. What would Toskozil's or Pavla's victory mean for the SPÖ? What impact would the vote have on the existing power relations in the country? And what would be the implications for Austria's revitalized Communist Party or KPÖ? Let's take a closer look and find out. Over the past decades, the Esperus working class tradition has increasingly moved into the background. The party adopted neoliberal policies, shifted to the center, and became more and more entrenched in the state bureaucracy and aligned with the interests of capital. As former defense minister and incumbent governor, Toskutsil is an integral part of the Esperus establishment. He and his camp are well connected with the bureaucratic apparatus of the party and the state. Babla, on the other hand, ran a grassroots campaign. He has criticized the Esperus establishment and called for a democratization of the party. Compared to Doskozil, Babla has also been more outspoken in his critique of neoliberal capitalism and the existing structures of wealth and power. His demand for a 32-hour work week with full wage compensation has caused more controversy than Doskozil's proposal to increase the minimum wage. Babla's candidacy has mobilized and repoliticized the party and Austrian civil society and shifted the public discourse to the left. If he wins, he would probably have to face more resistance from the party's entrenched power networks. If the comparison with Corbyn and Sanders is accurate, then we should not forget that both eventually lost the fight against the party establishment and failed to push their parties to the left. If Babla wants to avoid such a fate, he must first win the conflict within the SPÖ. The attempt to integrate the existing party apparatus could prove to be a serious mistake. Babla would have to give up positions and make substantive concessions. This would demoralize the party's leftist base and tarnish his image as a genuine fighter for the interests of the working majority. Yet Babla would not only have to deal with a capital-friendly, state managerial and technocratic party apparatus, he would also come under severe fire from the mainstream media, neoliberal think tanks, as well as the Federation of Austrian Industries or the Economic Chamber. The outcome of the runoff vote will also have an impact on the political power relations, in particular with regards to the right-wing Freedom Party, or FPÖ, currently leading in the polls. In that confrontation, Toskotil and Babla pursued different strategies. Following the model of the Danish Social Democrats, Toskotil combined state interventionist social policies with a more restrictive stance on migration. With this strategy, he inflicted a defeat on the FPÖ in the 2020 Burgenland state election. Pablo, on the other hand, believes that the advance of right-wing populism cannot be stopped by shifting to the right. He views flight and migration as social issues. Pablo's critique of neoliberal capitalism and his focus on socio-economic problems address the material foundation of the FPÖ's nationalist, racist and xenophobic discourse. His attempt to re-establish the link between the party and the working majority aims to weaken the FPÖ's social appeal. Beyond that, there's another aspect. In the past, the FPÖ has often won elections by framing their opponents as being part of the elite. This strategy would definitely be less effective given Pablo's working-class background and his informal style and appearance. And finally, what would a Doskotila Babla victory mean for Austria's left, especially the KPÖ? Following LKK's victory in the 2021 municipal elections in Graz and the surprisingly strong performance in the 2023 Salzburg state election, the KPÖ is currently on track of becoming a nationwide political force to the left of the SPÖ. If Toskotil wins, the public discourse would further shift to the right and make the field left of the Esper larger. 
Many who joined the party to support Babla could quickly turn their backs. The Kapi would probably be the main beneficiary of such a scenario. If Babla wins, the competition between the Esper and Kapi would intensify. A repositioning of the Esper as a genuine workers' party would reduce the Kapi's political maneuvering space and weaken the party, but probably only in the short term. The Kapi would no longer be the only political force in Austria which many associate with the left's resurgence and lose part of the momentum generated by the electoral success in Salzburg. In the long run, the Kapi could benefit from Babla's victory in two different ways. If Babla wins and succeeds in transforming the party from within, Austria's political landscape would shift to the left. This would widen the space for anti-capitalist struggles outside the SPÖ, make KPÖ positions more widely acceptable, and change the power relations to the benefit of the working majority. If Pablo wins in the run of vote, yet loses the fight against the party apparatus, the KPÖ could then present itself as the genuine left-wing force. The coming days will thus not only be crucial for defining the future of the SPÖ, they will also have a lasting impact on the power relations far beyond the party lines. That does it for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.